So today we're going to talk about um, what I titled it is making distance learning a long time viability, but it's really about more than just distance learning about it's about, you know, distance everything and all the other many things that we're all juggling right now. Um, distance learning just kind of came up because it's, you know, obviously we've got a lot of students who have been doing this for a long time. The teachers are doing it too. And um, I think everybody's been adapted as well as can be expected. Um, pretty phenomenal, really, if you think about it. Um, but right now, kind of right after Labor Day seemed like a really uh, appropriate time to do this just because we do have quite a few people at DLS, you know, staff members, teachers, students who have kids who are going back to school and pretty much everybody outside of the very few, um, their kids are full-time virtual. So, um, which from experience I can tell you is not that awesome. So we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, how to kind of you know, we've been doing this for a while. So we'll go over some information, like some, some stuff that we have talked about before. Um, but I thought some of it was worth reminding us all about. Um, and also, I think right now, kind of September, you know, we're getting towards fall. Um, it was pretty humid and gross out today. But like, you know, the mornings are starting to get cooler. You can, things are starting to change. So I think I always think of September is kind of a good time to, um, you know, kind of embrace change and uh, like re- uh, Re, um, recommit to, you know, to good practices, um, to any kind of resolutions that you may have. So it's just a good time to kind of take stock of where we are with working fully remotely, some of us having kids at home or whatever the case may be, um, seeing what is working, what is not, and how to kind of make the best of the coming months because none of us know what is coming. So, you know, for now, I think it's, I think it's probably, it, it behooves all of us to assume that this is permanent, knowing that it will not ultimately be completely permanent, but knowing that we will probably never go back to the way things really were 100%. So, um, which in some ways may be a good thing, in some ways may not be, but time will tell. Um, Blythe, the, um, we'll do the survey after I think the sec second slide. So one and, well, two more gotcha. slides and then we'll do the survey. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, obviously, again, you know, even if you don't have kids in school, there's a lot of balancing going on. Um, it's kind of, you know, summer's over. A lot of us had our travel plans curtailed anyway, so there wasn't necessarily, you know, it wasn't the usual summer, like the summer as we normally think of it, you know, if you were planning on going overseas, um, I don't know many people who were able to do that. Um, the pools for what they were are all closing, you know, just outside activities are going to start being kind of curtailed a bit. Um, so it's in a sense, in many ways, kind of back to reality, right? Um, we're all, like I said, facing in, indefinite teleworking. Um, maybe in the beginning that was really awesome. Maybe it's not so awesome now, or maybe you've kind of gone the other direction. Maybe you weren't happy about it, and now you are loving it. Um, but either way, you know, we, we really are entrenched in this new way of doing things. Um, I talked about, I just mentioned Zoom fatigue. Um, you know, we're all getting so used to doing everything via Zoom, via Microsoft Teams, et cetera, that, um, you know, it's, it's hard to balance that sometimes because, um, you know, it's, it's just a whole different way of communicating with people. So, um, like I said, many of the school districts are fully virtual, including my kids. Um, and with that, sports activities, whether for the, for the kids or even, you know, adult leagues or, um, you know, a lot of gyms are not open or if they are, you don't even, you know, want to go. Um, so a lot of things are canceled. Festivals, um, you know, concerts, all those things are canceled still. So and what's going to happen with Halloween? Uh, that's a big question. I don't know. Whether you have kids or not, a lot of people love Halloween. Um, so, you know, things are, things are definitely different. And so what options do we really have but to just kind of dig in, um, take stock of where we are and try to make the best of it. Um, and of course, I love this meme because that is, that was me, you know, it's like there's, what's the good option? I don't know. Send my kids fully back to school and risk coronavirus, starting fully online, homeschooling, definitely not. But, you know, a lot of people, I, f I think right now just kind of feel like their back is up against a wall and they don't have any good options. So um, trying to figure out that best way to, uh, to juggle is imperative. Now, again, you know, 
we got to kind of start thinking about this, um, get our mentality to the point we, where we really are assuming this is the new norm. Um, talking about, you know, it's okay to talk about certainly when things will go back to the to being in the office, when kids will go back to school, when everything will be open again. Um, but in a sense, you know, we kind of just have to accept no idea when the when the um, the vaccine will be available, you know, for wide use. Will that actually really make a difference, a tangible difference? We don't know. Um, you know, like I said, it's at the beginning of all this, there was a lot of, it was very novel. Um, but right now it's become, it's become anything but a novelty um, to wake up and go to your desk at your home, you know, like I read, I was reading that, I don't know, if, so this wellness tip that I was sharing, um, the woman basically was saying that, you know, every day felt like Monday, there were no, she had no discernible weekends anymore, um, and I, I feel that, like, I, every day is more or less the same, I, I've always had a little bit of a, um, of a wild schedule myself, but it's even more pronounced now, because it's just, I'm kind of always on and always juggling, you know, five different things. There's no nine to five for a lot of people anymore. It's kind of when you have time, when you, when you can fit your hours in and your work in, um, when you can fit your family life in, all of that. Um, like I said, the, yeah, go ahead. You lose the sense of time. Like for oh, me, yeah. what happened is that, you know, I, I think today is Tuesday instead of Wednesday. And, and, and I think that when the weekend <laughs> comes, I think one time I even... I even texted my student and told him, why is he not uh, on Zoom for the class? It was Sunday. And I oh thought my it gosh. was Monday. You lose a sense of time because the days are so similar. <laughs> you know, they're all the same. That's, it was so embarrassing. Yes, oh 100%. No, a year, trust me, you are very far from alone. Um, no, my, over the course of the summer, my son would always ask me, He'd be like, so wait, is tomorrow the first day of the weekend? And I would have to think for a few minutes to respond. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it even made a difference to him um, because there was no actual, he was doing the same thing every single day. Um, but yeah, it's, trust me, you are very much not alone in that. <laughs> so yes, it is, you know, we don't have that structure anymore. There's no, um, you know, especially a DLS, we're pretty good, you know, it's as a company, we're pretty good at you know making sure that all employees keep that work work life balance. Nobody's typically working in like crazy hours um, when things are normal. So most people were able to do like a pretty pretty standard nine to five kind of schedule. Um, we just don't. We have none of that now, um, which is hard. Um, even for the most, you know, I'm I'm definitely not type A. Like I can roll with the punches. So for me, it's probably a little bit easier than for some people. Um, but it, it gets hard for everybody. Um, and then again, you know, the, I love fall personally, but, but the days are getting shorter. Um, it's staying dark later. Um, you know, it's getting dark earlier. The cooler weather will be nice until it, you know, turns into cold weather, which who knows in DC anymore. But, um, you know, and then again, the summer blues, like the end of summer. So um, we've got, there's a lot going on as fall comes. Um, a lot positive, but you know, a lot, a lot that also should be dealt with. So I um, wanted to take a few minutes to just kind of take stock of where we all are. Um, so Blythe, if you could put up the survey, or can I do that? Yeah, thanks. Okay, so just take, um, you know, a minute or two. Okay, just another another One minute. Second. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. No rush. Huh. Okay. All right. So let's see. Can you guys see that or no? Show the results. Okay, can you see that? 
Okay. So some of this is a little bit surprising. Um, so on a scale of one to five, how satisfied are you with your current work-life balance? Um, very satisfied. I mean, there's, we're not a huge group, so it's, it's hard to get true representation of DLS, but um, it, that makes, that does make some sense because there are some positives, of course, you know, we have no commute um, to speak of. Um, so generally speaking, I mean, you're at home, so you can kind of, as soon as you're done working, you're, that's it, right? Um, so it is easy to, it is easier in some senses to maintain that work-life balance if you're very diligent with your schedule, um, you know, or, you know, to be honest, yeah, if you don't have kids at home, it's probably a lot easier too, um, just because there's not as much background noise and other things you have to do during the day, but um, slightly dissatisfied, well, that's, you know, it's not horrible. I'm glad nobody is very dissatisfied. So we're doing something right. Um, <laughs> so these are the two that are kind of funny. If COVID-19 disappeared today, what would you choose to do tomorrow? One of us said go to the office. So we're all like digging the working from home. Um, let's see, motivation. So we've got kind of a, a mix. Um, I, I mean, feel free to not say anything, but whoever said other, there are two of you, if you wanna share or if you're comfortable sharing what your biggest obstacle is. Is that you, Holly? Yeah, I, well, I don't know. I don't know what my obstacle is. Maybe that's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, those, I was like, no, I don't think it's those three, but you know, just, I think, I think it is just, yeah, the constant juggling of maybe all of it but um but yeah mm -hmm. just trying to find time to like fit everything in um and i'm like i have more time now so i don't know why it's more difficult but but still just you know struggling to to make it work yeah i don't know no that's that's that makes sense anybody else want to chime in on that well i mean holly you you have another I mean, when are you due again? You're, <laughs> oh, you know, like next week. So, okay, you know, yeah. maybe, so maybe you have the... another. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say that, <laughs> that, might, that might be your obstacle. Excuse you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the other. That's a big, but no, but there is a certain point. Um, you know, I think me personally, I, I, I've talked to other people. I think it's fairly common when I was like just out of college and I had no real responsibilities and I had a lot of time on my hands. I didn't really realize it at the time. Um, I was far worse at, at like managing my time. Um, I'm not saying you're in that situation. Obviously, you're getting ready to have a baby. But point is, is like when you sometimes when you have more free time, it becomes harder to actually, um, you know, to actually manage it. When you, I find sometimes that the more that I actually have to get done, the better I am at managing that time, um, because you just, you know, you have to figure out a way to, to make it happen. Um, and then number four, go ahead. Sorry, no, I was just trying Ollie, to- Ollie, you wanna say something? Quick. Yeah, I think it, it could also just be that the boundaries are gone, you know, where it's right. like, you know, like, oh, this is my work time and this is my home time. And now it's sort of like, oh, well, my family can interrupt during work time. And I'm like, okay, well, it's not a big deal if I take a few minutes and do this or, you know, but yeah, like that sense of, of boundaries just disappeared and, just trying to, you know, deal with that. So, yeah, and one hundred percent. There's the boundaries go both ways too, right? Work encroaches on your family time, but then family time encroaches on work. Um, and it takes. I honestly don't know that anybody is capable or able to one hundred percent, you know, uh, make those completely and totally separate. Um, I, it's, I think it's just kind of impossible when you're working from home full time. Um, a lot more distractions, a lot more things that you can do. Um, and you know, you're not quite as, uh, there's not quite as much, there's certainly accountability, not saying that we don't all get our jobs done well, but you don't necessarily have to have everything done by five. So you're like, okay, well, I've got more time. I can work later. Um, I can do a little work. I'm tired right now. So I'm going to go, you know, out, take a walk or you go to the store or whatever and I'll finish up my work later. So there's more flexibility, but that does lead to kind of a lack of boundaries. Um, and this one, I am, I have to admit, I'm a little bit surprised. 
four days telework, one day in the office. <laughs> I, but you know what? I, I've said all, all along that I think when COVID is under control and we're allowed to go back to the office, I think a lot more companies are going to see a lot more teleworking. Um, people are used to it. People see the utility in it. Um, and, you know, management, not that we couldn't before, but management overall, just across the board, can see now that people and be productive so um you know i it'll be interesting to see what happens when we are when we are able to go back to the office as a collective whole okay anyway so you don't have to um in the interest of time we don't have to really talk about this so much right now but um i will send these out i'll send the slides out after um the webinar of course but just a couple of things to think about you know if, as you, if you want to really kind of recommit to um to having a schedule and recommit to making your day as successful and productive and fulfilling as possible um just a couple of questions to ask yourself along the way um you know be honest with yourself uh if you if you're surprised by what's challenging you um the most um just because it's maybe something that you never would have thought you'd have trouble with um it, it's okay you know, we all change and different circumstances lead to different responses. So, you know, what part of your day is your biggest challenge? Um, for me, I struggle the most late afternoon. I just, that's kind of when I lose, like, kind of lose motivation. You know, I get more tired. I just, yeah, like, more, early morning is my time. Early morning into, like, lunchtime. That's, that's my best time of day. Um, but late afternoon is definitely my biggest challenge. Um, you know, so how can, how can I work around that? Typically, I use some of that. I do like late afternoon. I do stuff with the kids or do errands then um, because I front load my day, but that may not work for other people. Um, so again, when are you most productive? Are you a morning person, night person, middle of the day, a little bit of both? Um, logistics, what is working, what is not? Are you uncomfortable where you are working? Um, do you find that where you have your like everybody is constantly at you at home? Um, is there somewhere else you could go? uh is your chair really uncomfortable because that's a big one you know we don't think enough about chairs sometimes but very few of us have nice office chairs at home or did pre-covid so um you know something to think about who else do you need to consider do you have kids do you have a partner do you have a spouse uh a roommate you know they're we're all trying to work around each other um, and what would you like to add to your schedule uh this goes back to that idea of embracing change if there's something you know, if there's a morning walk that you'd like to start doing, or um, you want to make time to do some Netflix binging, or you want to read, um, you know, find ways to add that to your schedule. Because like Holly was talking about, we have more time. Um, it's just, you know, making sure that you do something good for yourself in that extra time. And then what would you like to cut out of your day? Um, we all have our times a day when we're not as productive. Um, you know, I'd love to cut out yelling at my kids and the 45 minutes it takes to get out the door anytime we need to go anywhere. I'm not sure that's realistic, but I could probably work on my my patience with them to, to make it happen a little bit faster. But um, so just, you know, think about these questions, be honest with yourself and they might help you lead to some, some answers. Now, um, so planning for success in the fall. So there's a lot that goes into it, obviously. Um, we'll talk a little bit about kind of scheduling, um, your workspace, like meal planning, um, activity planning, and having something to look forward to. Those are kind of the key areas I think that will help. Um, we've talked about scheduling before, so I'm not gonna beat a dead horse here, but um, you know, but you do want to create a schedule that works for you. Uh, like when the whole distance learning thing was announced for Arlington Public Schools, those like Facebook groups can be really, really helpful in some ways, but they can also be your 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 worst enemy um, because they were they're moms who are far more organized who are posting these like intricate schedules and like you know every little thing that they were going to do with their kids every day of the week. And I was like, there's I can't even begin to like to do that um so for me a simpler schedule that has flexibility in it works um so start with the basics figure out what you have to have in your schedule um and then go from there don't get i suggest not getting too don't get too granular with with your schedule um at least your weekly schedule so set your weekly schedule and then each day you can attack from at a more granular granular level 
Um, divide and conquer. If you've got somebody, a partner in crime, again, like a partner, spouse, roommate, whoever, um, you know, if you've got small kids and you're their, you know, your spouse or whoever can help, um, make sure that you're dividing those responsibilities. Um, being realistic is key, as I always, I harp on about this a lot. Um, you know, don't, you want to set realistic expectations. Um, it's good to, you know, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with having, uh, having ambitions about what your days should look like, but, but cut yourself some slack and, and have, you know, that dose of reality. Um, it's better to kind of, to surprise yourself um, and you can go up from there. Uh, don't over schedule. Again, you know, some people are better at time than others. I think we all know some people at DLS who are not great with time. Um, you know, so if you think, if consistently you find that you are running late to something or, you know, the hour that you have allotted for a, for a specific task or activity, it just is not cutting it. You end up feeling rushed and stressed. Um, then be, you know, don't over schedule that. Like give yourself more time, figure it out somewhere else. Um, and then again, being flexible. Uh, if something's not working, change it. Um, this is your schedule. So you got to be kind of constantly checking in with yourself and, and holding yourself accountable. Um, here's some just kind of samples that I pulled from online. You know, these two are kind of more targeted at somebody who has um, kids, you know, because that is certainly a, uh, a challenge. So I am sitting here, I'm, I'm at my desk. It's an actual desk, fortunately. Um, and then you can see behind me, that is my son's desk. So that's where he does all of his, uh, his synchronous learning um, with, a, with a few breaks from 9 a.m. to 2.20. Um, so, you know, he does have his teacher there, but a lot of, there's a lot of coercion that goes on um, to keep him at his desk. And then, you know, there's the breaks. Um, I have to get him outside. I have to get him active. I have to get him fed, all of that. Um, and then, of course, there's all these other things that you want to, you know, of course, do for yourself. So um, these are just kind of some kind of sample um, schedules. Note that there there is time allotted there for some kind of just hobbies, you know, watching TV, um, reading, going for a walk, outdoor time. Um, even if you don't have kids, those are, those can be very applicable. Um, and again, these aren't, these aren't overly, you know, overly into the details. These are just kind of basic blocks, blocks of time. Um, a few more that are not so much kid focused. Um, you know, everybody starts at a different time. Um, the one on, these are both a little bit like, uh, they, I mean, you can tell they came from like wellness bloggers, right? Because it's like, have water with lemon and stuff like that, with me, which maybe isn't necessarily in the cards for everybody. Um, have a mindful morning. Uh, I don't know if that's possible for everybody, but um, the, you see the idea. So wake up, give yourself a block of time to do whatever makes you happy in the morning. Um, you know, drink your coffee, drink your tea, um, sit outside for a little while. Um, but you can kind of get some ideas here. And again, if you deviate from your schedules, you know, a couple days a week, it's not a huge deal, just, just tweak accordingly. Um, and then this is from my, so this is my kitchen. Um, so on the left, that is like, I guess the, com the com control center or whatever you want to call it. Um, that's my husband's workout because I finally got him to work out after many, many years of failing. Um, but, you know, I've got like my, my son's chores that he has to do to get an allowance each week. We've got a calendar. Um, I have a school schedule tacked up there. And then the whiteboard is where I'll, I will write things, you know, like reminders or big things that need to be done that day. Um, if I need to like, if I've got a grocery list or something, I'll tack it up there as well. Um, and occasionally the kids will write some kind of, you know, like uh, some kind of, um, you know, helping each other, go Angus or go Pippa, something like that. But um, I, we've talked all along. I mean, Lindsay, you're a huge proponent of the whiteboards. Um, you know, these are great. I, I didn't really use one at the office, to be honest, but I think it is really helpful because you can just look up and get a snapshot of everything that needs to be done. And if I ever forget what my son is supposed to be doing, I just go and look and I know exactly where he's supposed to be um, at any given time. Okay, and then this is just, this doesn't really matter, but this is the school schedule. Um, so er, anybody who has kids in the local school systems right now has something like this. So it's a lot of synchronous learning. Um, so a lot of people are kind of, you know, basing their work schedules around this kind of, uh, this kind of schedule. 
All right. So now creating a workspace. So I did um, I did a blog post um, on this. So some of it's kind of repetitive, but um, you know, and hopefully you guys have all figured out what works for you in terms of workspace by now. Um, but just some reminders, you know, don't work on your bed, your couch, sitting on the floor. Um, kitchen table is like, I mean, that's not a hard no. Um, it depends how much space you have. If that's really the only place you have, um, then so be it. If you have a big enough table that you can allot one corner for your desk and you don't have to move it every time you wanna eat, um, that's you know all the better. But if you can avoid working where you eat, um, that's, you know, that's ideal. Um, but again, I realize not everybody can do that. Um, now create your own space as much as you'd like. Thank you, Blaine. Um, create your own space as much as you can. Again, I realize this partially depends on how much space you have. Um, you know, if you live in a studio apartment, for example, um, there may not, you know, your options are limited. Um, so if you don't have, like, not everybody has a specific desk or a specific office. Um, I'm in the den, so I've got, a, I'm surrounded by stuffed animals and Barbies, but you know what? It works. So I've got, I have a desk. It's mine, mine alone. Only my laptops are here, all my books, all my stuff. Um, but you know, if you just want to, you want to recreate like, your office at work or your your desk at work as much as possible. If you can, stay out of the basement or an attic that doesn't really have windows. Um, you know, the natural light is huge for kind of just keeping you on natural, just kind of your body's natural rhythm. Um, and I always find that if I don't get some sunlight over the course of the day, I'm, I'm a lot grumpier. So, um, you know, those, and those fluorescent lights are not, not real great for your mood. Um, stay away from the fridge. I'm not saying all day, but this is kind of where that proximity at the kitchen table comes into play. You know, it's a lot easier to snack. It's a lot easier to get food when you're working from home. Um, so if you if you have your workspace not in the kitchen um, or immediately adjacent to it, it does become more of an actual process to go get something to eat. So you know, you don't have to make it real hard to get something, but at least where you have to get up and walk a little bit to to get something to eat. Um, and then you know, don't don't do working lunches. I'm certainly not the best person to speak about this myself, but um, similar to what I've said about doing this at the office, you know, don't eat lunch at your desk. There's no reason to. Um, we all have more time. So unless you have like a, a meeting that goes over lunchtime and you just can't wait to eat, um, you know, just try to keep your your work your work, and then enjoy your lunch when you have a break. All right. And as for what to do, um, try to keep clutter at bay. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily always practice what I preach, but I do try to keep my desk at least pretty clutter free. Um, like I said before, find some good natural light. Um, if you can, recreate your desk at work. Um, not obviously to a T, but as much as you can. Like if you've got everything set up in a certain way um, at your desk um, in the office and that works for you, try to just try to create, recreate that as much as you can. Um, personalize it. Go ahead and put a picture of your dog or whoever you want to on your desk. Like, you know, the point is to make you really feel like you are coming to an office. Um, and again, investing in a good chair, you don't have to go spend a thousand dollars on one, but you know, there are, there are decent chairs that are not going to make your back sore, give you a headache, all of that, um, you know, for, for relatively little money. Um, and embrace your inner type A. Again, it's that whole keeping the clutter at bay, you know, we all feel, even if you are not the most organized person in the world like me, um, I always feel better when I have like a clean, organized workspace. So just, you know, do yourself a favor. At the end of the day, you're not commuting, so take five minutes to just tidy it up. Okay, now meal planning to minimize stress. Um, not that we had this kind of uh, vending machine at the office, but you know, you, you want to, you don't want to be spending a whole lot of time every day on figuring out what you're going to eat. You know, don't let yourself, Angus, no, don't let yourself get to the point where you're hangry. And yes, that is not, I guess that is not a, um, it's not a misspelling. That's just, you know, hangry. The where hunger and anger meet. It's not a fun place to be. Um, plan breakfast the night before. You don't necessarily have to make it, but if you know what you're gonna have and you know where it is, um, that will make your morning a lot easier. Um, 
you know, you don't have to do this, but if you really, if it, if you really stress about meal time, pack your lunches for yourself, for you know, your kids, your roommate, your spouse, whoever, um, you know, just, or at least put it all in one place or know what you're going to have. If you're having leftovers, you know, put that in one specific place. If you want to go whole hog, put it in a, in a lunch tote, you know, make it feel super official. Um, have healthy snacks at the ready. I'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute. Um, and then, you know, go, things are, since things are more open now, um, you know, try to make sure that you don't get to the point where you're like, scrounging for something to eat like go grocery shopping enough that you're able to plan your meals a bit um and if you're out of ideas this is a great website where you just put in what ingredients you have and it will help you figure out what you can make so i'm not the best at meal planning myself so something like that can be extremely helpful um now snacks at the ready fill your fridge up at the beginning of the week i'm not saying you have to spend all of sunday thinking obsessively about what you're going to eat that week but it takes just a few minutes to cut up some celery sticks you know get some baby carrots cut up some broccoli um get some fruit you know cut up like peel some oranges and and take the little pieces apart and you know have some fruit at the ready um, nuts are not hard to do. Just grab some nuts, make some homemade granola. There are a million and one good recipes for that out there. Um, if you're big into smoothies, make a big smoothie at the start of the day, have some for breakfast, and then save the rest for a snack later. Um, hard boil some eggs. Um, have I know we have a lot of avocado lovers at the office, so have half of, half of an avocado with some sea salt or maybe like you know, one packet of instant oatmeal. Um, there are a lot of things you can have, but just make sure that you have them at the beginning of the week so you don't start your week off by reaching for the nearest, you know, Doritos or chocolate bar, which are not bad every once in a while, but, you know, don't make a habit of it. All right, now that work-life balance we talked about, is it realistic or to be, is it fully attainable right now? Probably not. Um, you know, there's always going to be when you're working from home full time, there's always going to be some, some crossover. Um, boundaries are going to be really hard to maintain. So if you can't 100% maintain them, um, don't beat yourself up. It's just, it is what it is. It's life. Um, but, you know, a few ideas to kind of give yourself a little bit of a, an advantage. Um, you know, set a timer for, for when you absolutely want yourself to be done with work. Um, you know, six o'clock be like okay that's it i'm i'm logging off unless i have something that absolutely has to be done by tomorrow morning that's it everything else can wait until tomorrow set a timer and then shut down your laptop um don't no laptops in bed um you know don't if you can't fall asleep right away don't grab your laptop oh i can get a little more work done you know first thing in the morning don't don't grab it and automatically go for it just keep your laptop out of the bedroom um, set your work hours if you need to. Tell people that you work closely with, okay, I am available between, you know, 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. and then 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. Um, put it on the company calendar. Um, disable phone notifications. I sent that article around. Um, you know, it's not, you don't necessarily have to disable all of your phone notifications, but I mean, you know, those Instagram, Facebook, um, like your email notifications, uh, if you don't need to have them, then disable them. Um, you will find that you're, you know, when you're focused less on what your phone is doing, it really frees up some of that, it relieves you of some stress. Um, be careful with your meeting scheduling. If you are able to schedule, if you're, if you're scheduling a meeting, try not to do it for like, you know, really late in the day or maybe over lunchtime. Like try to schedule them so they're like, the good times of the day, you know, late morning, early, mid-afternoon, um, you know, be cognizant of your time and your coworkers' time. Um, and have a plan for the evening, even if that plan is to pop some popcorn and sit and watch, you know, Dancing with the Stars, whatever you want to do, um, make sure you have a plan so you don't get sidetracked by work. You know what you're going to be doing and then stick to it. Um, so with that, you know, embrace your hobbies. Um, if you're if you love to read but don't make time for it, make that your plan for that night. Then you're less likely to work, more likely to do something you enjoy. Um, and finally, support each other. You know, we, we're all kind of struggling in some ways. Um, we're all struggling to keep that work-life balance. So, uh, you know, I'm not always the best at this, um, but, you know, like, 
try not to email your coworkers at like 11 p.m. or you know certainly not text them or anything like that. I mean, there are rare occasions where that needs to be done, but um, you know, just be aware that don't enable. Let's not enable each other to be working around the clock is what I'm trying to say. Okay, um, and then I, we don't have to go over these, but just these are some apps that, are, that were made for like helping to organize the individual workday for people who are working from home. Um, I can't really speak to the utility of all of these, but um, you know, there's a pretty wide variety of apps here. So um, when I send this around, if you see something that looks you know, interesting, then I mean, there's one for yoga breaks. That's always good relaxing colorful break time um but yeah check these out some of them are free some of them are not but um apps can sometimes you know don't go overboard because then yes again your phone is is the only person you're talking or the only thing you're talking to but um but the occasional app use can be very helpful and productive um Again, you know, support each other. It does take a village sometimes for everything. You know, ask for help if, you know, your friends, like just talk to them, family members, see where you can divide responsibility. Um, your coworkers, if you find that you have one coworker who's consistently scheduling meetings for like 5 p.m. and it's really stressing you out because you know you've, you're, you're kind of shirking some family responsibilities, talk to them. Say, hey, you know, I understand that that's a good time of the day for you, but can we, can we look at some other options? Um, and neighbors, like I have talked to more neighbors since COVID started than ever before. So quite often people are willing to help you and you obviously are willing to help them. Um, you just have to kind of ask and see what you can do for each other. Um, Facebook, Facebook groups can be helpful for support, for, um, you know, for other things, um, neighborhood listservs, um, and then be kind to yourself again, you know, we're all doing the best we can. It's, it's weird. Um, it's hard. Uh, but, you know, having a little bit of a realistic attitude about what um, is, you know, what you really can do working 100% from home um, will definitely help to, uh, to minimize the stress and, you know, take a deep breath. Um, and then last but not least, I personally, you know, this summer, it wasn't, it wasn't horrible, but, um, you know, as many people, you know, our big travel plans obviously got canceled. Um, and, you know, that's something, of course, I looked forward to every year. Um, you know, I just having something to look forward to on your calendar can be a really positive mental boost. Um, I know we're not all going to be booking you know, round the world trips or going to Paris next week. Um, but, you know, small trips like people this summer, there's so many people doing Airbnbs, you know, going down, we went down to the Shenandoah for like three days. Um, you know, get an Airbnb in Baltimore for a change of pace. Um, you know, go drive down to Manassas Battlefield um, and walk around there. Um, but schedule it. Schedule like a nice hike with some friends or a long walk or a bike ride. Um, you know, revisit some of the sites of DC that maybe you haven't seen in a while, the Botanical Gardens or um, the uh, Arboretum or, you know, just even schedule a time to go walk around the mall, the National Mall. Um, and you don't have to, but putting it on the calendar and committing to do it to doing it with other people you don't necessarily, you know, see every day if you're comfortable seeing them. Um, it gives you something to look forward to, um, which is something I think that a lot of people are lacking right now. Um, and that's a, that's a missing piece in many people's lives. Um, we've got the holidays coming up before too long. It feels like a while, but they'll be here before we know it. Um, and a lot of people's typical holiday plans will not happen. Um, so, you know, give yourself, do some forward thinking and forward planning now to give yourself stuff to look forward to, um, you know, to, to kind of help offset that disappointment when maybe your usual Thanksgiving plans with your family don't, don't work out or something like that. So again, it doesn't have to be anything big. You don't have to break the bank. You don't have to go anywhere where, you know, you're really exposing yourself to a lot of risk for COVID. Um, but just small things, putting it on the calendar with other, you know, with your loved ones can make a big difference. And that is it. And I always end up talking more than I think I'm going to. So that is the full 45 minutes. But um, any questions?